let's start with a story coming out of Santa Barbara, California. That's where an annual street party known as Deltopia turned into an all-out street riot. Two KEYT TV photographers were caught in the melee and kept rolling. I'm just worried about the bricks, man. Yeah, you gotta watch out, too. Those stop signs have been torn out of the ground. The station aired this video and then notified viewers that it would be sharing the video with the sheriff's department and district attorney's office. News organizations are often subpoenaed for images that they've captured during the course of news gathering. How common is it to just turn it over without that official legal request? No, it's not it's not common at all. I mean, usually they either wait for the request to come from the sheriff's department or the prosecutor's office, or they wait for the subpoena to come. And then they make a decision along with, after consulting with their attorneys as to whether or not they want to do that. Uh, you get, you know, as a news organization, you, you can lose some of your credibility by being seen as an arm of law enforcement or an arm of the government. So for them to do this right off the bat, uh, that's uh, very unusual. Conversely, it's 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 interesting because uh, for television news in particular, so much of its coverage has turned to crime, and there is this relationship that you're building out on the street, not just with the hierarchy of police organizations, but with the cop on the street. And the cop on the street is paying attention to the way that you cover stories, and basically is saying, you know, hey. If you show yourself as unfriendly to us in terms of how you cover the news, then we may be less friendly with you when it comes to where we stretch crime scene tape and that kind of thing. And so it is a difficult situation, only exacerbated by the fact that both the report, both reporters in this case were related to someone within law enforcement. So the reporter involved here is the daughter of the sheriff. There's another reporter involved who is married to a judge. Um, that part not made completely clear by the TV station. In yeah, coverage. when you have conflicts of interest along those lines, you need to make it clear to the audience that you know that, that these people were involved, they have connections to law enforcement or to the government, and, but that does not factor into our decision. Now, whether or not the public's going to believe believe you when you say that, you know, who knows? But I think one of the, I think to go back to what you were talking about, Jim, I think you're absolutely right in terms of there is this sort of quid pro quo when mm-hmm. you're, when you're a police reporter out there, or you're, you're a journalist out there covering these kinds of events and the officers know you, uh, they're going to expect a certain level of cooperation because they're cooperating to help you get your story. So there is some of that there, but when you have the news director or the editor making the decision to turn over everything, that's when things get a little bit more complicated. And the other thing is, you know, a, a lawyer or someone from the police department can very quickly call up a news director and say, hey, you know, we're going to subpoena this information. And in fact, the news director says that in this case, that he's he, going to do that, he, that they're going to do that. Right. He expects that to happen anyway. So he's acting uh, preemptively and just... But that said, you wait for that. And, mm-hmm. and, and you do it if for no other reason. You don't re- want retaliation or you don't want some sort of, um, you know, for it to appear as if you're too cozy with the law enforcement. You go ahead and you wait for that. And this is a dance that newsrooms and, and various law enforcement agencies do over and over again. What I thought was interesting was that they said on the air, we're going to turn this footage over. And the other thing is you're setting a precedent. So this was a this was a riot. Who's to say that that's not going to be expected in other news gathering mm-hmm. operations that right. you do that involve government and law enforcement that they're going to expect you to turn that over? You've set a precedent now, so th- they're not going to just call you and ask you. They're just going to show up and say, "Hey, can we get that tape?" So you know? this station is setting a precedent with the law enforcement that it's cooperating with at this point. What kind of a precedent is it setting for stations and news agencies across the country that there might be a similar expectation? Are they making it harder on the rest of us? Well, I mean, yeah, there's going to be this level of expectations, but I'm pretty sure that there's some news directors right there in that market that are saying, we're not going to do that. Mm -hmm. If you want it from that station, you can go ahead and get it from them, but we're not going to to engage in that kind of quid pro quo with law enforcement or the government. But I do see um, more and more crime beat reporters in particular that are getting so close to their sources that there does become to be this blurred line that um, what is – what is information that I should provide to a source or to anyone 
what should I protect? What should I keep close to my vest? And where do I become cheerleader or supporter as opposed to imp impartial observer? Or collaborator, even if you Correct. go back to the days of when Dateline NBC was producing To Catch a Predator. Mm -hmm. right, right. And working to directly lure potential abusers right. 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 into a, a net right there.